Total Daily is daily Vikings entertainment. Do you just want the Vikings to win a Super Bowl before we die? I will ride with this group. Seriously, man. Please. And away we go. Yes, less than a month yeah. until the NFL draft. Yes. Yes. Happy draft month. It is. We're, it is draft yeah, month. It's April. I know. That's what I'm saying. Happy draft. Oh. We're, we're celebrating. Oh. And today we're going to celebrate, not with, we're going to kind of pause the draft conversation here. We're going to take a breather here today because I feel like we've covered a lot of angles when it comes to the quarterbacks they could take. Judd has eight-ish. Yep. We're going to say the list is, it's like eight-ish yep. free agents that are still on the market. we got sort of second, third wave of free agency that the Vikings could still dabble in. We'll do a hard count. We've got NFL over-unders. we got some other fun stuff here today on Purple Daily, but a reminder so we do have a few more VIP tickets available for the sold out Purple Daily Draft Party at the Fillmore on April 25th, four weeks. And we're making those 20 VIP tickets available in pairs tomorrow. Actually, I'm sorry, uh, Wednesday, I should say. Wednesday at 10 a.m. Central Time. Wednesday at 10 a.m. Central Time, scornart.com slash party. So this is your last chance to get a pair of VIP tickets. They're $100 a piece. Um, you'll get a score North beanie, a meet and greet with the show beforehand, food and drink vouchers. You'll get a flag to wave when something exciting happens. You can wave along with Judd. So just mark that. It's, I know there's not that many left here. We, we cobbled together 20 from a sold out venue, um, cause we got to be mindful of space, but that's your chance. 10 AM Wednesday at uh, scornart.com slash party. Also Judd, a shout out to our friends at quick trip, helping to power us every day here on purple daily. Yep, and in so many different ways, obviously, the quality uh, gasoline guarantee, obviously, the snacks. Uh, the car deck, wash. I got decks. the car okay. wash yesterday it, at Quick Trip. Wow. Oh, the car wash. I got the go. gas. Nice I got the car wash. How's Great the car, car wash. Car's good. It was, the, it was the bride's car. I got my own car now, but of course, I get, hey, can you uh, go fill up my All gas right. tank and get the car wash yeah, for me? Yeah. Sure. I can absolutely do that for you. So I went to Quick Trip, obviously. Great car wash. And I hope while you were there, you went inside and explored the opportunities for di for dinner because breakfast, lunch, or dinner are all available at Quick Trip. And I don't mean just a little snack. I mean dinner. I mean things like fried chicken, chicken tenders, roasted whole chicken. You can put their chicken mano a mano against the competition. And guess what? It is going to be a TKO advantage Quick Trip. You got the bone-in two or eight piece prepared fresh daily. The chicken tenders three or eight piece again. Perfect uh, for a quick, easy lunch or dinner. Boneless wings, as Declan just said, a car wash. I mean, where else Come do you on. need to go? Come on. It's literally one-stop shopping for everything you need, and the name of that place is Quick Trip. Thank you, Quick Trip. So the Vikings have already been very active in free agency. We're now, the, the dust has sort of settled. We're a few weeks past the, the initial wave of free agency, but they bring in Jonathan Grenard to help replace Daniil Hunter. Andrew Van Ginkle comes in. Shaq Griffin as potentially a starting cornerback. Blake Cashman as a younger sidekick to um, Ivan Pace with Jordan Hicks leaving. So they've done some work here and some other free agents too. But Judd has put together eight-ish mm -hmm. free agents that are still sitting out there that the Vikings could maybe explore here. They still have some cap space to play with, huh? They do, and I, I did this very much on positions of potential need still. Like, and and like we are at the point where you know it's probably the third or fourth wave, and so we're talking bargains. Like, you are going to a garage sale here, and it's like you're getting rid of that already. I can't believe it. You know, yeah, it's half price too. It's a lava lamp. Yeah, but it's only six dollars. So okay. you know, one man's garbage, another man's treasure. So didn't think I needed another nine iron, but if it's only four dollars, yeah, I guess. OK, I, I, I also in my older age here as my older age, as I'm entering my 30s, yeah, you're getting up, when I see up, a garage sale, up. I'm stopping. I, I'm genuinely interested when I when I see a garage sale now before like five years ago, I'm not going to go and look at someone's yard and look at stuff. No, I'm, I'm now no. interested in the garage sale. One hundred percent. Yeah, there's I mean, there's a whole culture of people. Gary Vaynerchuk sort of I feel like put this on the map again where you people go to garage sales and then try and generate like side hustle money going on oh, eBay. Yeah. Oh yeah. TikTok so maybe this is what the Vikings oh, yeah. can do. Exactly right. <laughs> exactly right. So my, my positions of, of um, identification here are cornerback one and I'll explain why wide receiver two, because I still think that there's a very good case to be made that you could be bringing in guys to compete for that, that 
wide receiver three spot. I mean, Brandon Powell might be that, and I like him a lot, but I think he might be a four as well. Um, and then a couple of offensive linemen that I will mention. But let's start at cornerback, because the Vikings right now have nine cornerbacks on their roster, okay? Mm. And and as far as starting opportunities, like playing legitimate, Makai Blackman, a Caleb Evans, Shaq Griffin, who was obviously just signed, Byron Murphy Jr., who's expected to play inside in the nickel now, and perhaps Andrew Booth Jr., but that's a big maybe, because he didn't play. Like, he got chances last year. I never got the idea that Brian Flores was too keen on him. Evans got chances. He struggled at times. So here is the start of my list, and I'll go to a name that, Phil, I think you were the first to bring this up, and it made perfect sense at the time, and I thought he'd be long gone by now, but... As far as I can tell, he's still there. I checked as of last night. He remains on the, the market. And that's a Brian Flores guy from the Miami Dolphins. Xavier Howard. Yeah. Xavier Howard is still out there. Now, the downside is he's going to turn 31 on the 4th of July. Um, he did allow nearly a 63% completion percentage when targeted last season. That's the second worst, second highest rate of his career. But this is a guy that knows the defense. And and let me say this. Shaq Griffin is a serviceable player. But I don't know, between the fact that there might be a job open across from him and, and the fact that he's got a one-year $4.55 million contract. But let's be clear. Like, it's not that much, right? Like, he's going to have to meet incentives and bonuses and yeah. things like that. So yeah. I don't know that Shaq Griffin contract is absolutely ironclad. And I don't know there's not concern at the starting perimeter outside guy across from him, potentially. Xavier Howard, a guy that we discussed actually going in the first week of free agency, is at least an intriguing name because of his familiarity with Brian Flores. So if they did that, I mean, are you saying that they would basically have veteran Xavier Howard and veteran Shaq Griffin as their starting outside corners and then probably Byron Murphy as their starting slot? And all of the young cornerbacks that they've put draft picks into, Makai Blackman, a Caleb Evans from a couple years ago, yep, yep. Um, Andrew Booth Jr., that those guys, essentially your young crop of corners would be bench depth? I am saying... I am saying that these guys are, would be signed so late that, that there could at least be more competition there. Because you can't assume, like, Booth might just be, Booth might not make the team. And so Evans and Blackman might compete. But because Griffin also was a late addition, I'm saying that if Xavier Howard is as desperate for a job as it appears he might be, that the, he's an intriguing name. And, again, you're going to a garage sale. So you're getting what we expected to be his price point, yeah. probably for pennies on the dollar. So I'm saying I could see throwing him into the mix for sure. And let's say he beats out Shaq. Let's say he beats out, you know, and, and Makai Blackman, who I actually like, plays well. Um, it just gives you another opportunity to get a guy on the field who knows what Flores does. And I'm intrigued by the fact that he's still bouncing around. Yeah. By the way, uh, I will say Xavier Howard, last year he only played three snaps in the slot. But the previous three years, he played 70, 98, 104. I mean, not a huge percent. He's mostly an outside cornerback. But he is a guy that, in a system where you've got a bunch of different moving pieces, you could put him in the slot if you want to. Um, I think it would be just a major indictment on the young cornerbacks that they have if they brought... I thought Shaq Griffin... I thought it was kind of like you have room for one veteran corner. Xavier Howard, Shaq Griffin, whoever... And I feel like they've checked that box, but I also don't feel great about their cornerbacks. Right. That's so a, yeah. you might as well keep Easter egg hunting, I guess. And guys get hurt, too. <laughs> that That's the thing. I mean, Caleb has had, what, two years ago problem with concussions. He gets yeah. ding, dinged up a lot. Well, now you're yeah. down to Blackman. I'm just, I'm trying to introduce the possibility of veterans that can be, that can at least vie for uh, jobs. And I mean, sure. you've got guys like, um, let's see here. AJ Green the third, who who assigned to a futures contract away from Cleveland, guys like that. So like you've got the the depth that you have behind the four that I brought up as the potential starter slash first guy in is not exactly great. So I could see upgrading. I could especially see trying to do it if internally you think that there's a chance that Booth Jr. doesn't fit the system. One last thing on Xavier Howard, because I know we have other names to get to here. 
PFF isn't the gospel, so I don't I don't think you know we reference PFF because they do a great job at least like trying to quantify performances of players that are hard if you're just watching on TV or from a press box. But Xavier Howard's performance has dropped every single year since his career best 2020 season, which was under Brian Flores. Mm-hmm. He's gone from an 87 overall PFF grade to a 71, to a 59, to a 55. So it's possible that he's just, hey, he's in his early 30s. Right. He's not what he was when he was 26 or 27. Right. And he's just a guy that's probably not going to make the team. And that's why I would sign him to a contract that basically says that. Sure. Because okay. it's so late now and he's still there. And I'm, I'm willing to bet the rest of the league is inclined to think the, what you just said is true. So like we're not talking about a two year with guarantees. We're talking we're talking probably a contract that's for less than what Shaq Griffin got on paper. Okay. So like again, the these guys are bouncing around. These guys, it's Saturday. The garage sale started on Thursday. All the good stuff is gone. And now you are basically just like going through, you're snooping through. It's the back of the garage on the table and sitting right by a Xavier Howard is another guy who's going to turn 34 during the season, Stefan Gilmore, mm. who was the 2019, this is a little in football terms, a long time ago, defensive player of the year. Um, when Diggs got hurt last year, he stepped in and played. He, again, is a serviceable, he's at the point of his career where he is, for the most part, a serviceable player. So, like, he's long in the tooth. Um, he again is not the guy that, that you are signing in hopes that he knocks Makai Blackman out of a job. He does give you more depth though. And in the case of Diggs, who I believe was hurt, was he hurt in September when, when he tore his, uh, yeah, I think ACL. It was really early. Yep. And then he stepped in and played well. That that's the thing is I'm trying to also create bailouts if guys get hurt. So for sure, Stefan Gilmore turns 34 on September 19th, a lot like Xavier has had his best days. Uh, those are behind him. Also remains unsigned. But if again, if you believe PFF, Gilmore is a lot better the last couple of years mm-hmm. than Xavier Howard. And he's just been a mercenary ever, ever since he left New England in 2020. So that was his his fourth and final year with the Patriots. Mm-hmm. He's just been like a one year mercenary guy with Carolina, with the Colts, with the Cowboys, like you said last year. So he probably winds up on a fifth team in five years, assuming he still wants to play. Hey, if a guy like Stefan Gilmore has some gas left in the tank and wants to come in here and, and play for Brian Flores, I think I'm more interested in that than, hey. than even Xavier and Howard. This is like when you go to a garage sale and it's like, oh, yeah. there's a crusty old uh, like catcher's glove and oh, there's a, a weird lava lamp. But, oh, oh, what's this little uh, pack of baseball cards from... 1984 maybe there's something valuable from 1956 yeah. i can pay my mortgage <laughs> um yes and th- this is al- also like like you see an item or in this case an aging player and it's like yeah they don't look good but then you realize if you clean them up put them in the right system a little put them in the right thing paint. Yeah. that there's exactly that there still might might be some uh some gas left in that tank which leads me to my third corner Phil, going into the free agency period, you talked about Xavier Howard quite a bit. This is the guy that I brought up, and he's still there as well, so it goes to show what we know. From the Houston Texans, he's going to turn 31 in January, cornerback Steven Nelson. Okay. Uh, Nine-year career, bounced around, Chiefs, Steelers, Texans, 13 career picks in those nine seasons, 78 passes, defense. Again, I think he's the type of guy who's going to have to take what he, he gets he's the third guy so and just to be very very clear here i am not advocating three guys i'm saying this is the third guy who could be a possibility as far as depth and if there's question marks injury concerns steven nelson yeah is my third guy yeah these i would say again according to pff uh much more left on the tires than Xavier howard so just kind of depends. And some of this with cornerbacks, it can be kind of fleeting. It depends on the system you're in. Are you on yes. an island by yourself? Are your teammates crappy? Does your defense get pressure? So it is really hard to gauge cornerbacks from year to year. But, yeah, it's another guy that has been just a rock-solid, above-average cornerback for almost a decade in the NFL. 
but he's in his early 30s. He's at kind of a weird age. To me, it's like it's two pronged. Are you okay with the gamble on a guy? Like if he makes your team and he looks pretty good in training camp, does, what does he look like when the bullets start flying and he's in his early 30s? And at what cost in terms of like suppressing some of the other young guys on your team? Yes. Makai Blackman showed some major flashes. Now, he also had a couple big time mistakes that led to touchdowns for teams. Like my gut says, I'd like to see what Makai Blackman can do as a starter. Agreed. But if you were to say, you know what, there's a reason why he was a third round pick and not a first round pick. Let's go with a reliable guy that's played, you know, 8,000 snaps in the NFL because we feel like he has another year left. I wouldn't fight that. Or it's if depth. Brian Flores said that. Yeah, or it's depth. And if if Blackman or or um, Griffin get hurt, guess what? You could plug a guy in. If you look, if you look at their depth right now, that's what sort of scares me. Is they've got a lot of names. But I don't know that, that they have a lot of guys that you would trust as much as a veteran to plug in at cornerback. Yeah. So I'm trying to create a couple of scenarios in, in which there's are, there are positions where it would make sense to try and add depth. It is bring, funny in sports. We do we do equate a lot of names in a bin with depth. It's not. But I think you bring up a good point. Our Minnesota mm -hmm. Twins are kind of going through this. Well, they got a lot of like starters. They could if this doesn't work, they could go over here to this guy. It's like, well, oh. yeah. Do you really want to see? I'm mean, here. Here's a guy that was with the Patriots. We talked about a lot in camp last year. Joan Williams. Okay, so he started training camp with the Vikings last year with the first team. He eventually got picked off their. He he got cut, put on their practice squad, picked up by the Bears. That Bears team. Played a little bit for the Bears, got cut again, and is now back here. Yeah. I don't know. That's a guy I really need to see all yeah, that he, much. Yeah. He's, yeah. And, and he hasn't had nearly the success. Like that guy's only played, I just pulled him up quick too. He's a former second round pick that I get what Quasi's looking at it saying, geez, he's 25 years old. Yep. He was a second round pick, played in the SEC in college. Uh, he's only played like 500 snaps in his career, but yeah, that's not a guy that you would say, oh, we have depth. We have reliable depth. Right. Right. That's it's a body in a room, but he's not a guy that's going to start at a high level, at least based on his four years so far. That's fair. It, and he might be a special teams guy as well, but I'm trying to give you guys that could play on defense. All right. So those are the names at cornerback. Let's go to a secondary position that again has quote unquote depth. There are 11 receivers on the roster obviously the starters are addison and jefferson um and they did sign trent sherfield from the buffalo bills one year 1.79 million dollars now he is more of a blocker he's a really good which is important blocker yeah. and he's a really good special teams guy um i don't think he's going to be at the end of the day, the guy that, that you probably want as your third receiver, probably the guy who's most viable is Brandon Powell. But I also want competition there. Like I, I don't want to, I like Powell a lot and I know that O'Connell does. And I think th that we spoke highly of him on the shows, but there's a difference between speaking highly of a guy like that and just giving him a, a job. Uh, so let me go through some of the options here at wide receiver. There's a couple. There's one I want. I want you to say one one name say in particular. It. Say it. Okay, say I'm gonna say. Name. I'm gonna say, say a name. name. I don't think it's the one that you want. I think I know the one that you want. But I'm going to start off with the one from Dallas. Played for the Cowboys, Michael Gallup. Okay. He That's not the a, one that I was thinking of. I okay. figured as much. Described as a high end number three receiver who is coming off not a great year. Um, he has never seen under 57 targets in a season. He has fit in as a three before. So, and again, because he's out there, he's out there. This is a guy you can look, see a little bit. I don't think yeah. he could, I, I don't think he's in a position to demand. And if he does, bye, Michael Gallup. See you later. We're not going to sign you. But he's my first one that I think at least could be a viable candidate to be signed and compete for the third receiver position. I don't hate this. Again, it's number three receiver here. You're just looking. You're looking for a KJ Osborne replacement, somebody that can give you a little extra something. So, yeah, I'm also. I would for that third receiver spot. I wouldn't mind a guy that can stretch it a little bit. Right. That can maybe take the top off somebody. But Jordan Addison showed he can do that. Not with like straight line speed, but with 
route running. You saw him fly open a few times. Yep. Michael Gallup, by the way, last year on passes that traveled 20 or more yards in the air, he had four. Ca- he was targeted 10 times, four catches, a touchdown. He's not the guy that five or six years ago put up 1,000 yards. Mm-hmm. But okay. Like if the Vikings announced today via press release, Michael Gallup is on board. That room is better. Which leads me to, and I don't know if this is the name that you want or not, but it strikes me as it might be. From formerly from the Cincinnati Bengals. Oh, Tyler Boyd. Tyler Boyd. Tyler Boyd, who is uh who who is very good in the slot, at least fifty eight catches for six straight years. He he's twenty nine. He's gonna turn thirty November fifteenth. Again, he's a guy that can operate out of the slot, which is a it's a uniqueish role, but there's definitely gonna be tread on the tire here. But Tyler Boyd would be the type of guy who I think if you brought to training camp could easily win that job. I'm I'm in on Tyler Boyd for sure. You're right. He is the opposite of what I just mentioned. Like a guy that can take the top off a of defense. He's more and by the way, this this offense is very much intermediate, a lot of short intermediate crossing routes, different things. So could he come in here and be a guy that helps move chains? Yeah. He's a good he's a good player. And I think you've got guys that can take the, the top off here as well currently if that becomes their their role for sure so and Boyd intrigues me because of this as well I think there's a case to, to be made and I went through this list and I don't I didn't include it because I didn't love it but I think there's a case to be made that we don't know when TJ Hawkinson is going to come back it's true. and TJ Hawkinson sort of serves that role like he's Little your safety blanket safety yeah. blanket guy he's your guy that can catch a pass for five yards and, and get the first down and if you look right now, tight end wise, I don't know. I don't think that they have that that guy. As much as I personally am a Johnny Munt fan, I mean, you can only ask if, if you ask too much of Munt, it's going to blow up. It's not going to yeah. be good. Now he can do some things for sure, but I mean, they've got definitely guys that can block as well. But I think if you are prepared for T.J. Hawkinson, let's just say hypothetically, to miss a month or two, I would really like a receiver that can come in and do a little bit more in the safety blanket role. And if I got a good slot guy, a guy like Boyd, I think he could, I think he could cover up for that for a few months. I am. I'm, I'm in on Tyler Boyd, by the way, the PFF projected contract is two years at like $8 million a year. Of course, the longer that this drags on right. with some of these guys, he's down maybe, to one for four. Yeah, that would be amazing. Um, and to the point of like safety blanket, TJ Hawkinson very much in that short intermediate safety blanket role. Tyler Boyd last year with the Bengals, 95% of his catches came 19 yards out or or to line of scrimmage. Sure. Like he is he is absolutely a short to intermediate sort of master. And uh, and he's been doing it long enough, and he's comfortable being the third wide receiver, as you saw in Cincinnati. So yeah, I'm I'm excited about Tyler Boyd. So who, it's not the name I guy? was thinking. Are you done with your receivers? Yeah. Who's your guy? How about we put the OG LSU guy with the new school LSU guy and bring Odell Beckham Jr. into this <laughs> I offense? I didn't even oh, consider God. him. I saw him. I didn't even consider him. <laughs> <laughs> he still has some gas left, man. I mean, he's a mercenary too, right? Last year he helped. He wasn't their primary weapon, but. Right. He showed up big a few times last year for Baltimore. And, you know, he used to be a huge home run threat. They targeted him. It's funny, 22% of his targets were on deep passes, 20 or more yards. And he only caught four of them. I don't know if that was just him eroding or if it was a Lamar Jackson thing. It's kind of a small sample size. But Odell Beckham Jr., I think he's kind of gotten into the phase in his career going through Cleveland. He spent half a season with the Rams where A, he's a mercenary, and B, he's comfortable not being the number one option. I think he would know full well, oh yeah, Justin Jefferson, Mm -hmm. let let me be the third wide receiver. Let me put my arm around these guys. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, he was still averaging 15 yards a catch last year in Baltimore in sort of limited targets. So Tyler Boyd would be, I'm in on Tyler Boyd, but I would put a phone call in to OBJ. What do you guys think? Uh, Out on OBJ. I, wow. I I got nothing there. Um, I like Tyler Boyd a lot. I think Tyler Boyd is a is a perfect little depth type of guy that can run intermediate routes and make life a lot easier. Also, a gadget player because he has six pass attempts in his career. 
Okay. This guy can throw Let's the football go. a little bit. Oh, of course. He's got some. He's, he's got some. Uh, he's got some <laughs> long completions to him. And I love me a wide receiver pass. So I can see Who Tyler doesn't? Boyd also getting called up for a little gadget play. He finds Jordan Addison for a nice little streak or Justin Jefferson down yeah. the field. But I, I would be much more in on Tyler Boyd than Odell Beckham Jr. Okay. All right. Yeah, I'm, I w- I'm not going to fight you on that. I, I, I think Tyler Boyd would be a really good fit. Be a good fit. Still calling OBJ just to see what he's doing. I believe I saw that, that he was talking to the Dolphins, but this was like a month ago, and I don't think it worked out. So mm-hmm. I'm not sure what's going to happen with it's him. It's possible he's saying, I'm still OBJ, guys. I'm not playing for $2 million, right? I'm, give me. You know, you what's, know what's possible then? That he's signing in the UFL and playing next oh, week. Oh, man. Man, get him, Adrian Peterson at 39. By the way, the projected contract for Odell is one year, $7 million. So just yeah, super affordable. You could throw a void year on there, which they love to do to kick some of the cap oh, down the road. I'd give him one year, $7 million, you know, with, with all incentives included, though. So it'd be like a year for three and a half or something. Yeah, okay. I mean, I'm sorry. He's going to go... I'll, these guys are still there. Like they were big names at one time. They're all there for a reason. The last thing I want to talk about here, and I, I it's a little bit of a conundrum, more so than because I don't come to this with answers. I come to it more with questions, and that's the in particular because I'm assuming that Ingram is back at right guard. It's the left guard position. So like Phil, you you were and we talked about this extensively early. Like get a left guard, get a you know get a really good left guard. Um, so a couple of things here. One is the guard slash center that I like the most is an injury problem. Connor Williams, who played for the Dolphins, but he tore his ACL in December. Now he's only going to be 27 in May, so he's not that old. Um, but clearly if you tore your ACL in December, you're not coming back for training camp and hell Mm -hmm. you're not, you're not, I don't think back for opening day. He really intrigues me, and I would be tempted to, if if everything looked to be on track, to sign him to a cheap contract to compete when he does come back or eventually slide in. But I'm going through the Sharp Football Analysis list of available free agent guards. Wow, football. Wow, dude. Well, I mean, this is important. Like, like people forget about this now. It's like it's draft time, and you know what? It is draft month. God bless draft month. I love it. It's but also fa- still free agency season. But yes, yeah. exactly right. But, I mean, you still have to be dabbling in that world that that is called free agency. Now, the Sharp Football Analysis top guy is Dalton Reisner, who he, is He's the top PFF. There. Yeah, he's okay. the only, like, so, top name available. But if you're not going <laughs> to... Right, exactly. That's what I was go- going to say. I mean, this list is uh, marked by guys like... Um, Phil Haynes, Lakin Tomlinson, yeah. uh, you know, it's just is, a is, lot of is Greg Van Roten on your list? Cody Whitehair is on card. my list. Greg Van um, Roten is yes. 34 years old. He's, he's the highest graded he's guard. Four. He's so he's he was I think he was drafted by the Packers. He was an undrafted free agent Packers 2012. And he's been with like five other teams, Las Vegas, and is like he's an above average guard. But that's kind of do you trust Right. I don't think they're bringing Reisner back at this point. Wouldn't they have already made that happen if they liked him enough? Unless they're trying to get him way down, but I, I'm inclined to agree. I think there's something I think there's something they didn't like. And, and so, they gave Brandle enough to Brandle can start and I'm sure they'll draft somebody on day three. So we'll But see. that's sort of my point is if they're like, Okay, you know what, Blake practiced hard, we liked what we saw, he can definitely play both tackle and guard. That's all fine, but my question is this: like, is there another guy off th- this list to at least uh, bring in? And and that's where, you know, Connor uh, can't participate in training camp. I get that; that's a problem. But would he be a type of guy that you would bring in so when he's healthy, he would be there just in case? I don't know the whole guard, the whole left guard thing to me. I don't think we should just assume that Blake Brandle is going to be fine there. I think that's a little bit of a stretch to, to be like, well, they must know he's going to be fine because we've seen this team do this with guards before. And I'll tell you right now, it's not necessarily fine. Yeah. So there it is. Judd's list of eight-ish free agent options here in the second, third eight, wave. Seven and a half, eight-ish. Yeah, seven-ish, eight-ish. I like Definitely the wide receiver idea. put whatever he wants idea, on the headline. And I don't hate the corner <laughs> idea. 
We'll That's also on feeling. Purple Daily on Draft go into targets that are not quarterbacks today. So we will have draft talk on Purple Daily on Draft. But we, I, I've also read, some, can we get some non-quarterback targets? Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. Well, we'll, we'll, we'll get into those. Full of targets. Full of targets. So, all right, boys, we got a hard count here today. Everybody hold your water. Balls, balls, balls. Yeah. Triple shot. Balls. Green 18. Green 18. Where we go around the NFL and football world, and we have NFL over-unders for you. And I want to play a little game with you guys here, presented by our friends who are back in the mix for another fun season here of off-season speculation and the season Ugly Deck, gentlemen. Ugly Deck is back on board. It's patio season. Welcome back, too. Welcome back. Look at that right there. Guess what? Springtime means deck time. A new deck from UglyDeck.com. Now, I talked a lot about DIY a year ago, and that's still true. But guess what? They can also install it. They're offering up, by the way, $1,000 off for a limited time. So you could get one of those gorgeous decks, 1000 bucks off. Uh, with install, you're going to get the best carpenters. With DIY, you get the best coaches to help you from start to finish. They will even install uh, your footings and the ledger. Free estimates in a showroom with gorgeous maintenance free decking and railing, ugly deck, a mission, by the way, because they are they call themselves ugly deck, but they're on a mission to rid the world of ugly decks. Uglydeck.com, setting up appointments now at their Shakopee Deck Design Showroom. Uh, just check out uglydeck.com. Uglydeck.com, DIY or install. You know what? It's uh, springtime. It's time to get that new deck. Yeah. Let's also clean up your waterfronts here. Aquaside right. is back for the warm months. Declan? Yeah, you look outside at those lakes, and uh, maybe you're starting to think about cabin season, right? Maybe it's still a little chilly, but you want to put that dock in here pretty soon. Well, call your friends at Aquasai, because you, know, you might have some of that lake weed algae on there. You don't want to step into that. Ugh, that's the worst thing. They have Aquaside products that are easy to use, and they begin working right away. They're both registered with the EPA and DNR. Aquaside and AquaClear pellets are another great option to strip the dead weeds. They'll even help you identify the weeds and offer treatment advice free of charge, plus shipping is free. To get learn more and get these Aquaside pellets, you can go to Aquaside.com. That's Aquaside.com. All right, we're going to play a game here. Everybody hold your water. I'm going to list a bunch of NFL over-unders. We're just going to go mm-hmm. through every single one. We don't have to break down every single one, <laughs> but I want you to stop me. Anyone on the show can stop me. Okay. When we get to one where you're like, ah, I have a strong opinion. That's we're, okay. we're going under that. We're going over this. Okay. Perfect. So we'll start at the top and work our way down. We'll start at the 11 and a half. Three teams, and this is from DraftKings, by the way, from like four days ago. 11 and a half for the Chiefs, the Ravens, and the 49ers. Okay. It feels about right. I was going to say, yeah. Yeah. Is, is Sam. <laughs> San Fran and Baltimore might slide back a bit, but given given what they're coming off of, I don't have a strong objection to. It. Yeah. I might fade San Francisco there. I don't think yeah. they're I don't think they're train wrecking, but I could see tough schedule trying to climb back up the mountain again, yeah. aging roster. You know, does Brock Purdy take a step back? Could they go like ten and seven, be a wild card team? I could see that. Rams and the are Ravens moving. are just yeah. so consistent every single year. They, 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 I think they actually still have like the best NFL team winning percentage since they've entered the league. So it's it's hard to really fade mm-hmm. them. Oh, it's a tough division. But uh, okay, 10 and a half. Buffalo, Cincinnati, Dallas, Detroit, Green Bay, Miami, Philly, Atlanta. No, way too many. Way well, give, too many. Pick, pick one that you're feel Eagles. strong about. Eagles. I think the Eagles are sliding. I, I actually think that, that Sirianni could go from a year ago or two years ago now being a hero to being fired. Um, Jason Kelsey is a huge loss. Fletcher Cox is a yep. locker room loss for sure. And I yep. mean, these guys might not have been who they were, but they were still really important pieces. Uh, Philadelphia seems like it seems like they're reckoning is coming a bit and some of these you know the fact is in this league especially some of these windows are just really really brief they're really brief things go go well case in point the 2017 vikings i mean was that a window or was that just a pop-up it was probably more of a pop-up so i think philadelphia for sure i would pick 
as I would not be surprised if they don't approach that win total. Like the Bills, like the Bengals. I still like the Dolphins. But Lions and Packers, one of those teams is not winning 11 games. Like, I, I, I have, I'm pretty hard-pressed to see both those teams being a double-digit win, win team in the NFC North. Uh, one of them, I think, will obviously win 10, 11 games. But one of those fades back a little bit. And I'm mm-hmm. guessing it's probably Detroit. I think they I, overachieved. See, I think Detroit has... They have a young, really good team. I don't know that Detroit takes a... St- I think you're right that it's tough to see both teams winning at least 11, but then Green Bay is young and ascending, so it's tough. The one that stood out to me on the 10.5 line, I've seen this team on the 9.5 line, but DraftKings has them at 10.5. The Atlanta Falcons. <laughs> what are we doing here, guys? You've got enough evidence for yeah, years and years. Don't get greedy. 9.5? No, awesome. Yeah, you'll probably go 10-7. and seven. 11, you're going to jump four games? A guy, Kirk Cousins, that has been a gravitational pull toward 500 in all but like one year of his career, the 13 win season. So, I think Atlanta needs to take a deep breath and calm down a little. Yeah, you're gonna have you're gonna have the best quarterback you've had since peak Matt Ryan, and you're gonna unlock some of those weapons. Are you leaping up toward Super Bowl contention with the 11, 12 win teams? They're probably. No. I my guess is that they also are are figuring in the fact that in their division, they think they're just going to sweep a bunch of teams. But that which, division always produces like feisty teams. The Buccaneers. Tampa Bay's you know, not bad. I mean, I thought they were, but they're not. The the, the, the other team I think is worth uh, bringing up is the Miami Dolphins. They've lost a lot. A lot. I mean, that defense has lost. I mean, heck, Christian here, Wilkins Van, gone. Van Ginkle yeah. was a nice player. Christian Wilkins was a star, a stud in the middle of that defensive line. Yep. I would not be surprised. Like, 10.5 might be aggressive for them. Yeah. Okay, the 9.5, there's two of them here. Houston and the Jets. I'll fade that 9.5 on the Jets. They brought in two old injured tackles. Aaron Rodgers is running for vice president. Like, it's the Jets. Why are we doing this? Why are we doing this? Like, what are we we thinking? Okay. Are we thinking? So this guy is... 40 right he got hurt on opening night last year the team fell apart but now we're like well he well a 40 year old is coming back and so that's gonna change yeah i don't get this one and and um they're a mess still like their head coach fighting with the owner like there's a there's a bunch of stuff there's just a bunch of stuff now now Uh. i will say this i might graduate i might replace like a philadelphia or a miami at the ten and a half line with houston yeah, Houston, it's tough because it's like, okay, now you're now teams are ready for you. And CJ, is there like a step back in year two mm-hmm. for CJ Stroud? That's a really hard number. Mm-hmm. I might even take the under on that just for like a year. I think long term they're in really good shape, but we'll play a tough schedule. So, okay, the eight and a halfs. This is another big group Chicago, Cleveland, Indianapolis, Jacksonville, Chargers, Rams. Pittsburgh, Tampa. Mm. This Eight one's and a half. tough. This one's tough because it's not like it's an ask, but it's not enormous. I think I'll take the under on Chicago. I don't know that. Are they going to be like two wins better with Caleb Williams jumping in right away as a rookie? Yeah. I don't know. I think they're going to be competitive, but I, I don't know. Nine wins seems a little lofty for Chicago. I know the Colts still won games with Gardner last year, but I think that's also pretty heavy to assume that the Colts can be a nine or a ten win team with Anthony Richardson. I just don't know. It could happen. I yeah. just I, th- I think there's too much unknown there for me to lock that one in for an over. Here's a question: Do you take the Harbaugh effect and actually uh, pounce on the Chargers there? It's so tough because they've lost weapons. They've I know. They've got some older weapons, though. Like some of these receivers, we know yeah. their names and we liked them a lot, but they weren't exactly in their prime now. They still have a really good QB, Tough and there's division. the Harbaugh effect. Like, like if anything, he is the first few years, bang, 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 yes. he pops up, and then it might dissipate a little bit. That one I might, I might hammer as a good play to go over that. You're probably right. Rams, too, feel very solidly coached. Now, they did lose one of the greatest defensive players of all time to retirement right. in Aaron Donald. Yep. Um, the other team I would throw out here is 
to me, mash the over on Jacksonville. People remember the last five or six weeks and like, oh, they fell off a map and Trevor Lawrence. When Trevor Lawrence was healthy before the high ankle sprain, that team was headed for like the one seed in the AFC. Yeah. I think they they were like the first team in the AFC to eight wins, weren't they? I mean, they were right up there fighting. They were going to win that division. Okay, seven and a half. New Orleans, Seattle, Washington. Washington? Washington at seven and a half. Dan Quinn coaching him now. Wow. But if the, so, but seven, if Philadelphia t- takes a step back, if Dallas takes a step back, right. they're going to win. Some, does right. do the Commanders pick up an extra win or two? The Saints expect Still. to be improved. Mm-hmm. I'll give you some six and a halves here too. All right. Minnesota, Arizona, Las Vegas, Giants. I, I, mm-hmm. Minnesota at six and a half. Call yeah, me a homer. That smash the over on that. Yeah. It's going to go up if they draft a quarterback. It's oh, yeah. going to go up. Yep, they're yep, not. No. They're not starting. Yeah, they're not starting Josh Dobbs for seventeen weeks, folks. Yeah. They're not group. starting Nick Mullen. You got you got what you wanted after Kirk left. No, they're not. They're not starting Jaron Hall for four months. Right. And the the expectation, the only expectation that that um, this can have right now is you're starting Darnold. But like Declan said, when I'll say it, when they draft a quarterback high because they move up. It, that's going to change. Mm-hmm. That tax bracket will go up at least one, I think. Yeah. And then there's the five and a halfs and the four and a halfs. The five and a halfs are Denver and Tennessee. The four and a halfs are Carolina and New England. You know, Tennessee added a lot of pieces. I, Car- like, yeah, Carolina, I like Tennessee. To, Carolina, their o- owner is a, is a circus clown, but are they going to remain that terrible or are they going to pop up? I mean, I mean, here's my thing with... Boy. I'm not convinced Bryce Young is like bad. I his situation sucked and he had a really tough year. But we tend to just like, okay, Bryce Young's a bust. CJ yeah. Stroud's great. You know, let's give it some time. Because if Bryce Young is wired right, he's gonna come back and compete. He's not gonna be like, Well, I guess I suck. Or is he ruined because it's right. this, this train wreck situation and Adam Thielen is your number one receiver. Nice guy, but like not a number one receiver at this stage in his career. I'm not expecting great things. I'm just asking, is that number a little bit too low? Yeah. The Patriots seem like they're going to be absolutely abysmal, which of course means they'll win like nine games. I like the Titans to win six. I think the Titans can win six games. Will Levis, they've given a lot in the offseason here. I think they can do that. Broncos are interesting too, because if they draft quarterback, that's going to go up. Yeah, and I don't think it goes up generally, significantly. Yeah. Generally, Sean Payton teams are not train wrecks. I mean, there's the whole situation here with Russ, but he's been, even with some of those awful defenses he had in New Orleans, they would still find a way to like seven and nine or whatever. So so the potential to pop up most post-draft, the Vikings, the Broncos, who else? If you get your quarterback. I yeah. mean, Washington's going to get Jaden Daniels, but they're already at seven and a half. Yeah, seven and a half. Yeah, yeah that's pretty so, fair. Go up you know, if, if the Chargers get one of the, t- if the Chargers get Marvin Harrison Jr. or Malik Neighbors or something, you'd feel better about their weapons. I think that, the Har- they're at eight and a half already. So yeah, I think I think the Harbaugh effect might be my might be one of my like top three outside the Vikings storylines to watch. Because he doesn't, it doesn't feel like he like waits around. Hey, we're gonna be building some here. It's like he walks in, it's like bang, and and teams love that, and then they yep. get pretty good. Yep, he gets everyone to just believe in us against the world, whether uh-huh. it's college or NFL. We've heard the stories from Booney. So okay, next item here. Everybody hold your water. The UFL came back over the weekend, and they unveiled True Line measurement technology by a company called Bolt Six to help measure first downs. So it's a lot like when you watch a tennis major or Wimbledon or whatever, they've got that Hawkeye system where, okay, there's a close call, a ball is close to the line, and then the the player, you know, Novak Djokovic will throw his arm up, and then within like five seconds on the screen, they've got an, the the whole court is gridded out, right? It makes too much sense. Or like baseball's electronic strike zone, you know, that they haven't yet implemented in the major leagues because they're 15 years behind the time. But um, did you guys see this, and are you interested in the NFL adopting it like they stole the XFL's kickoff model this year? I did not see it, but my question is very simple. Where is it? You also you also need to, to have a trigger on the goal line. So if the ball does indeed you know, hit the goal line, 
like in hockey, a red light goes off or something. This league's worth billions of dollars. Yes, this is what you need. And like, is there anyone, and I know the old school ball fan says, you know, balls and strikes are the umpire's discretion, right? And then you get into the old school, well, hey, but you got technology now. Do you know any sports fan who says, you know what I really love? You know what reminds me of yesterday? The, the chain gang. The chain when they, gang. I've never heard anybody say that. So, yes, I love this idea. I love this idea. Implement yeah. it yesterday. You have the money. This is not a money problem. Yes, I love it. So this is it's a write-up. In, yeah. oh, go ahead, Dax. You have, you it's just embarrassing that there's two buffoons that go out in the NFL with two chains, and that's what measures a first down. It's the silliest thing we do in professional sports in terms of rules. <laughs> I don't like umpires. Bust out, I think bust umpires out the little stink. card. You're telling me there's two guys that just stand here with the chain, and then there's an index card that goes between that and the football to signify a first down. That's what qualifies a first down in 2024. It's embarrassing. It's embarrassing. It is funny. So here's the write-up from the company is Bolt 6, known for its commitment to pushing technological boundaries within the sports industry. Bolt 6 has developed TrueLine technology using advanced optical tracking systems. By installing six calibrated 4K 4K cameras and uh, installing them around each stadium, Bolt 6 ensures accurate, real-time ball-spotting capabilities. Football. Mm which are essential for the fast-paced action of UFL games. Love it. Bolt 6's TrueLine technology leverages trained machine learning models that spring into action the instant a referee places the ball on the ground. These models swiftly determine the ball's exact position on the field with all processing conducted in the cloud to ensure minimal on-site equipment is needed beyond the -the state-of-the-art Bolt 6 cameras. So you still need a human to, to say... Well, this is where the ball, because right. that, that's one thing that we haven't been able to figure out. It's like, oh, a, a knee hit, so the ball needs to go here. Right. So a human has to spot the ball, but we can get rid of the chain gang here, walking out, right, stretching it out, whatever. It's better. Yeah. So we figured out a new system here, I guess, the UFL. Yeah. The UFL is doing all the innovation for and the we XFL talk before about this. this like, how long have, have we, we have talked about a, a, some type of system on the goal line for probably five to eight years. Mm-hmm. Okay. It's a touchdown. Not, well, I think he might've got the know. ball. I think he might've got the ball. Just hey, Rich, over. No, he didn't index Larry. card. Is that, is that a first down or not? Let's get the little index it card out like, that we use for ACT no, prep to measure if this is a first down or not. Nobody has ever said, you know what I really love? Those goal line plays where you can't tell if the ball crossed the goal line. <laughs> God, I long for those days. You remember yeah. You remember back when Larry Zonka would score those touchdowns, and we didn't know. The thing is, but there needs to be, uh, there needs to be a human element no matter what because, sure. and maybe I'm wrong on the technology side, you can put a chip in the ball and have the goal line lasered up or whatever, but all it's going to do is confirm whether the ball crossed it or not. So I could throw a pass into the end zone and it can confirm, yep, the ball crossed through the laser force field. But sometimes you do need to confirm, like if there's a pile and you're wondering, we know that the guy's knee didn't hit. We're just wondering in all of the bodies, did the ball hit the plane? And the answer can be yes with this. But you may still need like a human to say, the ball crossed, but his knee hit or his forearm hit beforehand. Either way. If the UFL can implement this, the right. NFL can implement this. They're taking the right steps. Credit to them. Yeah. So, okay, there's your uh, your hard count here. 18, 18, 10, On Purple Daily today. I think we have time to squeeze in a fun mock that I just saw come across this morning. I want a mock. Mock. This mock draft update presented by our friends at Nicolay Law, the exclusive personal injury law firm of Purple Daily. Now, Nicolay Law, very proud to serve the Twin Cities communities that they live in. They're just your normal everyday folks, the ones you see at the gas station walking the dog, maybe at your local watering hole. And they know how uh, life in the Midwest is because they're living it as well. They're just normal folks who happen to have law degrees. And when an unexpected accident occurs and you give them a call, you know you're working with people who truly understand where you're coming from. Go ahead and get Minnesota's injury uh, award-winning injury lawyers get Nicolay at nicolaylaw.com or give them a call at one eight five five Nicolay. So this is from ProFootballNetwork.com. A couple interesting twists here. We'll start with the first three picks: Bears get Caleb Williams, Commanders get Jaden Daniels, Patriots take Drake May. So. 
pretty much chalk for the first three picks. Mm -hmm. And then the Cardinals get Marvin Harrison Jr. And now the real fun begins. Now the Chargers are in the driver's seat because they don't need a quarterback, but there's other teams that do, right? So they trade out with the Minnesota Vikings who are now on the clock. So the trade is the Vikings get the fifth pick. The Chargers get the 11, the 23, the 108, so a fourth round pick, and a 2025 second round pick. But the Vikings traded their 2005 second round, 25 second round pick, right? Yes. So they might want to go back and double check their math on this. (laughs) Yes, they did. So anyways, they can figure out, they can haggle over what the other thing is. But the Vikings are now picking number five, where they select... Out of Michigan, J.J. McCarthy. I want a mock. Mock! This trade wouldn't happen until the Chargers are on the clock, right. probably, right? Right, because teams would be trying to get the Cardinals pick to potentially get McCarthy if McCarthy's stock is what we think it is. Yep, and the Vikings would be trying to get the Cardinals pick, and they would be saying, yep. hey, don't worry, we're not going to screw you here, but we're just we're going to take Marvin Harrison Jr., so please call right. the Chargers if you want to move up. So the Vikings take J.J. McCarthy. And then the Giants are on the clock at number six. And they take Michael Penix from Washington. Oh, snap. Five quarterbacks in the first six picks. Including a quarterback who falls as far as the second round in draft still, right? Yeah. I've, I mean, there's mocks that have mocks. the Giants taking him in the second round, right? Yep. And then so then it goes, you know, Malik Neighbors falls to the Titans, which would be a dream for them. You know, Falcons can take the first edge rusher off the board, Dallas Turner, Joe Alt to the Bears. And I'm trying to see if they've so then they've got Bo Nix going 12 to the Broncos. So they have six quarterbacks going in the first 12 picks Sean Payton, on man. Pro Football Network. Whew. So do you guys so here's one Giants question, okay, which will directly impact the Vikings. Don't you guys think that if the Giants are going to take Daniel Jones' successor, that they would work a trade with the Cardinals and, like, get McCarthy if, indeed, they like him more at four? Because they, they would be going from six to four. So the drop drop for the Cardinals is not as bad. They give the Cardinals a little bit more of a sweetener. And then they would still have the choice at six of one of two great receivers. It's a yeah, it's a good theory. But if you're the Cardinals and you can get the haul that the Vikings could give you, because it's going to cost a lot more to go from eleven to four than six to four. But oh, then agreed. The, but then yes. the Cardinals could, if if the Cardinals are cool with any of those three receivers, yes, and they they all look like they're going to be just great receivers out of the gate, right? They could then trade back up a little bit from eleven to like eight or something, yep, and still get like the second or third receiver off the board. Just depends on what other offers are out there. I'm just saying, if the Vikings are are holding their 2025 first round pick out, and the Cardinals are like, we need that, and and the Vikings are like, no go. I think you turn to the Giants. If because sure. then you still get one of those two receivers, you still get a nice haul back, and you're still in great position. Yeah. So yeah, but if the Vikings if the Vikings include their 2025 first to the Cardinals, I think it's a done deal there. You know, uh, I not, never going to rip a mock that does trades because there's a lot of these mockers that we're we're in mock season here, and you're not doing trades, then just get out of here. Yep. But if you're going to do trades, you got to do a little research, make sure that the picks that you're trading, you know, that the teams have those picks. So come on, Pro Football Network. Just, uh, 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 at least they tried. Prep work is overrated. Uh, by the way, a shout out to a couple of our draft party partners too. We're looking forward to this. It's going to be the best night of the year, uh, a celebration of Purple Daily, your favorite football team. But Crybaby Craig's is going to be in attendance, and all VIPs at the Purple Daily draft party are going to get a free bottle of Crybaby Craig's. And our friends at Popcorn of Minnetonka are the official flag sponsor. Everyone in attendance gets a flag, a Purple Daily flag, and all VIPs are going to get a popcorn sample bag. So thank you to some of our partners here. Crybaby Craig's and Popcorn for helping us power the draft party. We've got a lot more today. Purple Daily on draft with Declan and Miles and Tyler. It's a Thor's day later in the week, and he's already hitting us up with some fun talkers. So stick with us here throughout this draft lead up in this offseason. Daily Vikings Entertainment, where we just want the Vikings to win a Super Bowl before we die.